Please welcome now from the great state of Texas, our old friend KK Freeman. Good morning, Mr. Freeman. Oh, I like it here. Thank you, KK. Hey, my friend, Imus. I am your friend. So. I know. KK is running for Texas Agriculture Commissioner on the, on the platform of legalizing marijuana. And hemp. And hemp. What's the difference between marijuana and hemp? You can uh, smoke hemp all day and you will never get so high you need a step ladder to scratch your ass. Okay. Why would, That's the difference. Why would you want to smoke it? Well, you wouldn't want to smoke it. It has over 30,000 uh, uses. 30,000 products can be made from it. They're now making, I know contractors that are making uh, uh, roads, um, houses, and they say it's, it works like a thermos. You know, it keeps the houses uh, cool when you're supposed to and then uh, warm at the right times, and it, it w will not attract mold of any kind, and it's just a better product. So they're using and, and hemp. And just reviewing what, what we talked about last time about hemp. Do you remember who the world's number one, uh, what's the world's number one country in uh, hemp production? No. It's China. It's China. And do you know who their biggest customer is? No, I do not. Hazard a guess. Us. No, it's, uh, it's Willie Nelson. Oh. <laughs> uh, but um, Texas should be. The yeah. number one hemp producer. Right. And um, do you think? Do you say that? Um, do you think? Denver's I've talked to haven't had crops in six years, like in Big Spring, Texas, mm -hmm. and it's you know everything is drought conditions, and and hemp requires fifty percent of the water that cotton does, mm -hmm. and it also requires no pesticides, which uh, Deidre I think at least will appreciate. If you have a, a crop that has no pesticides. And the other crop, cotton, sucking up 25% of the pesticides in the world, uh, and it requires half the water. Well, if you were a farmer, which would you pick? You'd grow hemp. Do you think Deidre, she won't, she's dragging her feet on growing marijuana there. Well, the grow hemp. That's, that's, that's the one to do. Okay. And, uh, Have you talked to her about this? No, not yet, but I'll tell you what else she's going to like. We've got a, a, uh, you know, we, we do, uh, the Ag Commissioner handles school lunches, too. Yeah. And um, we could do a real cool thing with the kids growing their own gardens, organic, you know, oh, sure. uh, uh, local. And, and it's really a question of inspiring people. I miss right now, I don't think there's a politician in America that you and I are truly inspired with. I don't think anybody's inspired with these guys. No, they're not. And so uh, that's... That's part of what I think I can bring to the table. It's going to be a very anti-establishment election. And uh, I should point out that uh, this runoff is May 27th. And anybody who did not vote already in the Republican primary can vote in the Democratic primary May 27th. And uh, when we win that thing, we are really off to the races. And I think you're going to be uh, very surprised by the number of people in Texas uh, who are for lifting the prohibition on pot and hemp. Uh, my wife, as you know, it would be uh, a stunningly enthusiastic about a school lunch program. That's what we do at the Amish Ranch. We teach kids about where, where the food comes from. They, they think the food comes out of a box, but old uh, Gabe and all of them, they, 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 should, they take them down there to the greenhouse and out in the garden. they got a two-acre garden there and show them where it comes from. Well, it's very similar to uh, my experience in the Peace Corps in Borneo uh, as an agriculture extension worker. Uh, and that is if the farmers screw up, I mean, if, if you're helping them or changing their methods and uh, they have a bad year, the whole tribe is in trouble. And that's no different here. I mean, the, if, if the uh, rural farmers or the rural folks get screwed, then the people at Whole Foods in uh, Austin, Texas, are going to be screwed down the line. And I'm telling you, rural people are really left out of the loop. Uh, there's a very famous uh, singer that you know in Austin. I told his wife, uh, who's a big liberal Democrat there, I told her I was going to Lubbock, and she says, yuck, yuck. Yeah. That's what they think of Lubbock. And who's the singer? That's what they think of El Paso, and that's what they think of East Texas. Who's the singer? That's got to change. Who's the singer? I'm not going to tell you. 
Like guess what you're telling me? No, I would be breaking a confidence. Okay, well, don't do that. Hey, uh, did you watch the Academy of Country Music Award last night? What do you think? Probably no. You're right. You like George Strait? Uh, I think George Strait's okay. I like a couple of his things, yeah. I saw it. I'm, I'm late to the George uh, Strait bandwagon, by the way. <laughs> but I lean more toward, uh, you know, Hayes Carl and Delbert McClinton. And yeah, no, you've always... Uh, Charlie Robinson. Yeah, well. I, I wanted to mention something I, I didn't... Uh, we didn't talk about last time, but we were to be serious for a moment here. Sure. About, about, uh, about I think, the biggest issue with, uh, with a legalization of pot, the general issue is the incarceration rate. Uh, in America, which when Nixon was president, uh, the incarceration rate was two to one over other developed countries. Okay? Yeah. Two to one, America had twice as many incarcerations. Mm -hmm. Today, it's eight to one. Jesus. And we are making criminals out of people who are simply not criminals. Mm -hmm. And of course, the taxpayers paying a huge huge amount for all of that. Well, I desperately want you to get elected, but... I, I honestly, we're going to get elected. This, is the, the, this will be exactly like gay marriage. I was, you remember, I mean, I was in 2006 the only candidate who endorsed gay marriage, yeah. probably in the whole country, running for statewide office. Yeah. And uh, we're right with pot this time. This thing is going to... Um, I'm telling you, I've talked to too many times, and I know what I'm talking about here. We're going to win this thing. So. But everybody get out and vote May 27th. That's, we, we get through that one. Uh, we're going to do very, very well. And uh, please, folks, contribute to the cause here. Texas for Kinky. Texas for Kinky. Make a contribution. Uh, this is great. It's really the Texans' choice, man. Do they want to be seceders, or do they want to be leaders? Now, if you lose this time, I don't know. I'm not, well... Barbara know, Jordan about. lost three times. So, uh, uh, Lincoln and uh, Churchill lost you're, more than I did, but we're not going to lose this one. No, no, you and I are running out of time, dude. You're on the right team. Honest? Yeah. You guessed right this time. You picked okay. the right, well, right horse. I love you to death, Kinky. Right, I was, this interview was a little slow, wasn't it? Honest? That's fine. Yeah, everything doesn't have to be humorous in the world. Well, it was good. All right, anyway, it's a pleasure seeing you, man. Thank, Thank you very much, Kinky. See you later. So, let me talk to you.